let's take a look at Elliot Friedman's eighth thought here on his most recent 31 Thoughts article on Sportsnet. This thought reads, A number of NHL teams were in Sweden over the last couple of weeks to scout potential free agents. There are four I know of. Defenseman Lawrence Pilut, age 22, and Joel Pearson, 23. Winger Michael Lingfist, 23, and center Par Lindholm, 26. Pilut's father, Larry, was born in Detroit and played in the NCAA before going to Sweden where he settled. Among the teams who were watching, Boston, Calgary, Chicago, Nashville, Vancouver, and the Rangers. Likely more. So a few of you guys might have been looking at this and have been wondering, okay, what's the deal with this? Who are these players that we are potentially scouting and what's so special about them? So in this video, I'm going to be going over Swedish free agents and the ones that were specifically mentioned here in Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts article. These four are all players who are under the age of 27 and they're all expiring on their contracts. And obviously, just based off of the teams who are watching these players, these teams being NHL teams, it's most likely that these players are going to be playing in the NHL or potentially the AHL next season. So, going off of the first player, we got ourselves Lawrence Pilut, and here on Elite Prospects, he's listed as a Swede-American player. So, his birthplace was in Sweden, but his nationality is listed as American and Swedish. This guy, he's 5'11", 179 pounds, a left-handed defenseman, 22 years of age. What's so special about this guy? Well, He's got 27 points in 36 games for the HV71, and playing on this team, he actually has the A on his jersey, so he is an alternate captain. In terms of his team, Pilut is legit, he's, he's first. He's first on his team in points. He has 27 points. That is good enough for a five-point lead over the second-place guy on his team, who is actually over there on a loan, and... If you want any more convincing that this guy is an interesting player to look at, all we gotta do is go over to Swedish defenseman stats. Who's number one in Swedish Hockey League points for defensemen? It is Pilut, with 27 points, 0.75 points per game, that puts him just in like the top three, I believe, in terms of points per game in that total category. So, obviously... The SHL and the NHL, they're different games. Just because you succeed in one doesn't mean you'll succeed in the other. And it's really prevalent in the most recent selection of Swedish players that have come over here that that is the case. For instance, look at Anton Rodin. Anton Rodin is a player who really tore up the SHL. He was on pace to having like the best SHL season ever, something along those lines. Then he got injured, he recovered, came over to Vancouver, and he didn't play because we didn't give him an opportunity. So, whatever that may be for, maybe it's, oh, they didn't feel that he was right for the team or whatever. He wasn't given an opportunity, and now he has gone to HC Davos, which means that he, in particular, Anton Rodin, hasn't had a chance to really succeed at the NHL level. And I'm going to say that because a lot of other players who have succeeded in leagues in Europe haven't succeeded at the NHL level as well. Not everybody can be a Radulov. Not everybody can come over here and be like a Shipachev. And I'm going to say that because he wasn't given opportunity either. Case in point, Lyndon Vey. Vey absolutely did not deserve first-line minutes on the Canucks. But what does he do when he gets to the KHL? Well, he just casually puts up the third most points in the league before leaving and going to the ZSC Lions. That was actually... Earlier this morning, I might make a video about that. So, yeah, Lyndon Vey is an example of that. All of these guys here who are Swedish prospects, they might not be NHL players. They might not be players who succeed at the NHL level. But that doesn't mean that we don't give them an opportunity. Because Vancouver is out here scouting these players. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're trying to find some young guys who can fill in the core roles on our team in the upcoming future. This is just the first guy, Lawrence Pilut. Let's move on to another defenseman. Let's go over to Joel Parison. He's an interesting one, and here's why. He's 23 years of age, 5'11", 170 pounds, 
And so far in the SHL playing for the Lakers, he has 26 points in 36 games. He, in contrast to Palut, he's second in defenseman scoring in Swedish Hockey League rankings. And he's one point behind Palut. So yeah, they've both played 36 games. Pearson's at 26 points, Palut's at 27 points. Okay, what else is special about this guy? Well, it's the fact that he plays on the Lakers. He's fourth in Lakers points right now. He's got 26. The leader on that team, by the way, is Elias Pettersson with only 29 games played. There were a few highlights coming out recently just of Pearson passing things and moving things around over to Pettersson. And that in itself is just such a strong contributing factor as to why this player could succeed in a role with the Canucks. And I'm talking about with the Canucks because, you know, the Canucks were scouting these guys. That means that they're low-key in the running, right? Joel Pearson has all the reason to come to Vancouver, not just because we have a good history of Swedish defensemen and Swedes in general, but because Elias Pettersson. Pettersson, whether he makes the team or not next year, could be a good contributing factor into convincing a guy like Pearson, who is Pettersson's teammate, mind you, to come over to the Vancouver Canucks organization. And that's something that these other guys, Linkvis, Pelut, and Lindholm, don't have. So, take it with a grain of salt, I have no idea what's going to happen. We saw the same kind of thing happen with Brock Besser and Troy Stetcher. Of course, this didn't happen with Kajula, because he went and went his own way, going to Edmonton. But this happened with Stetcher, and also Stetcher was a homegrown kid, too, so there was also that. But Pearson has got that potential as well. Moving over to wingers, we got ourselves Michael Linkfist. He's a little bit older, 23 years of age, a right winger, also 5'11", 172 pounds. This guy is playing for the Fargestad, BK. 34 points, 32 games. Okay, what does that put him in respect to the rest of his team? Well, he's actually third on his team in points. Johan Rhino and Dick Axelson both have more points than him. Axelson is actually one of the Swedes that made the Olympic team. And Rhino, he's 31 years old, so he's kind of a vet in the SHL at this point. But Linkvist, he's a player who's got 20 goals. He leads his team in that category. In terms of SHL scoring, Linkvist is down there at 9th with 34 points. And his 20 goals is good enough to put him, I think it's in the top 4 or whatever. I think he's 3rd in goals in SHL scoring. So that's really good, right? For a 23-year-old player who's just starting to really find his stride and who's having scouts from the NHL look at him and potentially say, okay, this is a guy we want on our team next year. So that's awesome. I want to see what he'll be able to do if he gets offered an NHL deal. And the last one that we have right here is Parr Lindholm. Now, Lindholm is an interesting one. He's 26, so he's the oldest out of the bunch. He's 5'11", just like basically all the other guys have been. He's 187 pounds, so he's a little bit heavier. However, he's playing on the Skeleftia AIK, and he's got 40 points, 16 goals, 24 assists in 37 games. Where does that put him in the league? Well, that puts him at 4th. He's at 4th in SHL scoring. 1.08 points per game. The only player on his team who has more points than him is Joachim Lidstrom, who is 1st in the SHL in points. He was the guy duking it out with Elias Pedersen for that number 1 spot. And Pedersen right now, he's actually below Lindstrom in points and points per game. So, yeah, we gotta be cautious about that. But the center of that first line, Par Lindholm, is definitely, he's the vet of this class of players that are currently getting scouted right now. So, yeah, man, I mean, I don't want to be the kind of guy who sits here and pretends to know everything about these players. I have no idea. I don't know these players. I haven't watched a lot of their highlights. I'm looking at the numbers here, and I'm saying to myself, okay, these are players who might make an impact at the NHL level. Of course, we can't be certain, because players who succeed in Europe do not necessarily succeed in the NHL, where the players are bigger, stronger, tougher, and the ice space is smaller. You got less room to move around, you got less room to do what you want with the puck, you got less flexibility. 
on NHL ice. Which is why just grabbing any free agent in Sweden who is above a point per game isn't necessarily a guaranteed victory. Of course, there have been some circumstances where these players coming over from Europe haven't gotten a good opportunity to play. We saw that with Rodin. We saw that with Shipachev. And whether any of these guys come over to the Canucks, which I haven't even mentioned the Canucks that much in this commentary. I'm just giving you guys a profile of these players that are being scouted according to Elliot Friedman. But having any of these players be in the Canucks system, it wouldn't be a bad thing. We wouldn't lose out on anything if we signed any of these players. We wouldn't be in a position where we're forced to compensate or give anything up to get any of these players. They're free agents next year. So, hopefully, the Canucks are able to land one of these guys. Hopefully, if these guys do make the NHL, they absolutely tear it up. Because watching brand new players come to the league and have this amount of success, let's say, like, Artemi Panarin, it's beautiful. It grows the game, and it adds a new dynamic to NHL scoring threats. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for Plastings Nostra Trolls, like Nostra Gaming, and bye.